each week I like to dedicate a few hours to some food prep and my preference and strategy when it comes to food prep is to prepare some easy, healthy, grab-and-go type snack options. And then I also like to prepare components of meals versus preparing entire meals. And then that way we aren't eating the same thing day in and day out. I have a little bit more flexibility with what I can do with those ingredients, and it still helps to speed up mealtime quite a bit throughout the week. So the first thing that I had on my prep list this week were some banana muffins. These are my one bowl oat flour banana muffins. I'll be sure to link the recipe in the description box down below. They are a favorite and they're super easy to make. So for these muffins, we need three bananas, two eggs, a half cup of Greek yogurt, and then three quarters of a cup of cane sugar. You can also use coconut sugar in place of the cane sugar, or you can use rapadura sugar. Oftentimes I will do that. So you've got a couple options here as for how you can sweeten this. You can also substitute applesauce for the bananas if you wanted to make an apple muffin recipe instead. Oftentimes I will do that. So in that case, instead of doing the three bananas, I would do a cup of applesauce. So now I'm just adding in a good splash of vanilla and we're gonna get that mixed together really well before we add in all of our dry ingredients. As I mentioned, we're using oat flour in these muffins. Oat flour is one of my very favorite gluten-free flours to bake with. I just love the results. It's also quite inexpensive and it's really easy to make at home yourself if you have a blender. So all you're gonna need is a blender, some rolled oats, certified gluten-free if necessary. You're going to add the oats to the blender and blend it up until it's a fine flour. Super easy to do. For these muffins, we're gonna need two cups of the oat flour about a half teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'm just adding all of that directly into the wet ingredients, super easy. We're gonna get that all whisked up, and then we're going to add in our chocolate chips. Now, for chocolate chips, just like with vanilla extract, I don't ever measure it, but I typically like about half a cup, I would say, for this muffin recipe. And we're going to evenly divide that batter into a 12 muffin pan. And I do prefer to use liners, just a personal preference in my muffin pan because it's probably my least favorite dish in the kitchen to do. And because this muffin batter doesn't have any oil or any butter in it, I do like to give the liners just a bit of a spray with some olive oil to make sure that there is no sticking happening. And these are going to bake at 350 for about 30 minutes. One of my main focuses when I'm doing my food prep is always protein. And on this day, I actually did a little bit less than I would typically prep as far as protein goes. And that's just because I already had a whole chicken cooked and ready to go in the fridge. And I am making some maple breakfast sausage. Today, I am just using grass-fed ground beef because I don't have any pork. We should have ours back from the butcher very, very soon though and I am doing a larger batch of this. So I am doing two pounds of the grass-fed ground beef, and what will happen is I'll probably end up freezing some of this after I have cooked up the patties. Now, when I make breakfast sausage with ground beef, I season it a little bit differently than 
I do if I'm using pork. I typically will add quite a bit more seasoning when I am using pork. So for the beef breakfast sausage, I keep it really simple. I just add in some salt, some garlic powder, some onion powder, and then some pure maple syrup. I don't measure, I just kind of eyeball this, whatever looks right, and it always turns out delicious. As far as maple syrup goes, I would say I probably do about two tablespoons per pound, and I find the flavor comes through really well that way. And so I'm just gonna get that all mixed up really well and formed into some patties. My preference for cooking my breakfast sausage is to pan cook them. However, if you want a really hands-off option, you could also just lay these out on a parchment lined baking sheet and bake them in the oven. I do find that this adds a lot of flavor though as the maple syrup kind of caramelizes in the pan. And I am heating my large enameled cast iron pan over medium to medium high heat, adding in a little bit of coconut oil, and I am gonna cook these breakfast sausage patties a few minutes per side until they are cooked through and nice and golden brown. Another snack that I like to prep are homemade gummies. If you have kids, this would be a great thing to add to your routine, and they are super easy to make, and only two ingredients are required. So today I'm using my homemade grape juice from our grapes, and then grass-fed beef gelatin. Now, gelatin is a great source of glutamic acid, and glutamic acid is going to convert to glutamine in the body. Just to summarize really quickly, that's going to be a really important thing to add into your diet if you're struggling with leaky gut. Bone broth is also a great way to do this, but I love to have these on hand. So my typical ratio is two cups of fruit juice and three tablespoons of gelatin. I am using five tablespoons of gelatin today because I have just under four cups. And this might seem a little bit silly, but I like to measure the gelatin into a separate bowl. That way I can sprinkle it on top of the juice. We're going to let it bloom. And by doing that versus measuring one tablespoon at a time, I feel like it doesn't get as clumpy. With gelatin, you do want this to bloom in cold liquid. So I like to do this just by pouring all the juice into a pot, allowing that gelatin to bloom, and then heating that up to have the gelatin dissolve. If you add the gelatin into hot liquid, it is going to get clumpy and you're probably going to end up with lumpy bits in your gummies, which is not super enjoyable. To keep this really easy, I just pour this into a glass baking dish. We'll let that set in the fridge for several hours, and then I'll come back and slice them into cubes. However, if you want to get fancy, you can put these into gummy molds as well.
One of my very favorite foods are sweet potatoes. And I have been on a major sweet potato kick in the last few weeks. And how I like to prep these really simply is just by cutting them in half lengthwise and then massaging in some coconut oil or some olive oil. I'm using probably about two teaspoons for all four of the sweet potatoes. And I just rub that into both the cut side as well as the skin side. And then I'm placing the cut side down onto a parchment lined baking sheet. Now, as for seasonings, I like to keep this really, really simple. So I will typically just do plain salt, but I have some onion salt that we made together in the summer. It's just coarse salt pulsed in a food processor with some onion tops. So that is what I'm using today. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that on top and these are going to bake at 425 for about 30 minutes. And I love having these with eggs for breakfast or adding some chicken and some other vegetables and making a sort of stuffed sweet potato that has been a go-to lunch of mine. But they're just really great to have on hand and act as a great side dish to dinner as well. One of my favorite things to have on hand in the fridge are pickled onions. They make such a great addition to salads, to tacos. They're great on my stuffed sweet potatoes as well, or even with eggs. They just add a ton of flavor to a lot of different meals. So to make these, all you need is a half cup of water and then a half cup of vinegar. Today I'm doing a mix of apple cider vinegar and white vinegar, but you can do either all white vinegar or all apple cider vinegar, depending on your preference. And then I am going to be adding a teaspoon and a half of salt and a tablespoon and a half of cane sugar. You could also use honey if you wanted. And sometimes I'll also add in a garlic clove or two or some chili flakes, but today I am just leaving this super simple. So we are going to bring that up to a simmer, allow that sugar and the salt to fully dissolve into the water and vinegar mixture. And then I am going to get a red onion sliced up. You could dice this, I like to do it in slices, just however you prefer. And then we're going to add those into a pint-sized mason jar. Pack that in as well as you can. And we're gonna to top those off with the hot brine. And these will be ready to use in probably 30 minutes to an hour once that has cooled down. The hot brine is going to help this process speed up. And then we're just gonna put this in the fridge and we'll have these to use throughout the next few weeks. My food prep always consists of some sort of vegetable for salads as well as snacking. 
throughout the summer when we have a ton coming in from the garden, I have a much larger variety, but right now we are just doing carrots. So I'm doing some carrot sticks and then I'm also using my vegetable peeler to make some carrot ribbons, which I will use in salads. Another way that I like to prep vegetables is just by peeling them and chopping them to roast. We love roasted vegetables throughout the cooler months. So right now in the fridge, I have some beets and parsnips that I have prepped. They aren't roasted, but I can just put those on a baking sheet with some olive oil or some tallow and get those roasted really quickly. Fermented foods are something that I try to incorporate into our diet really, really frequently. And fermentation is one of the ways that I preserve the garden harvest through sauerkraut and fermented pickles. Other fermented foods that we love are kombucha and water kefir. So water kefir is something that I've been doing on and off for years and years, and I'm just getting back into this now. And so I have some dehydrated water kefir grains that I'm going to be using to get a new batch going. So it's super simple. And what I love about water kefir compared to kombucha is the process is a lot faster. So to a quart jar, I am adding a quarter cup of cane sugar and I'm just adding enough hot water to make sure I can get that sugar dissolved. And then I'm gonna to top this off with cold water to cool this down to room temperature. So you wanna make sure that this is cool enough that you're not going to kill the water kefir grains when you add them in, but that is all there is to it. So it's just a sugar water that you add your grains into, and this is only gonna ferment for about 24 hours, and you're gonna be left with a bubbly soda type beverage with lots of good bacteria in it, those water kefir grains are going to feed off of that sugar. And you can just drink this plain, or I like to add in some lemon or different fruit juice to flavor it. So that wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for spending the afternoon in the kitchen with me, and I will see you in the next video.